Um, so the way that this kind of came about is in our Facebook group, people kind of kept asking like, you know, about what do you do for sort of gatekeeping or, you know, an application process if you have open enrollment. Uh, and instead of kind of trying to answer what we do individually, I was like, should we just do a little presentation about it so that everybody can kind of learn what we do at our campus uh, one time. So um, I am at Windward Community College in Kaneohe. I've been teaching here since 2010. And when I first started, this was a small veterinary assisting program. And I've worked really hard to um, get AVMA accreditation for a full vet tech program. Um, and with that, with us being part of the University of Hawaii, we are open enrollment. So I'm going to kind of talk about what we do for our application to second year um, when our first year is open enrollment. Oh, let me click on it. There we go. So our program layout, we start with veterinary assisting as a two semester certificate of achievement. Uh, and this is year one of the program. All of the students have to complete the certificate in veterinary assisting before they can continue on to second year. So they need to complete every single course in there um, before they can move on. We do have open enrollment until our capacity is reached. Uh, our students have to, incoming students have to attend an information session to be able to declare their major as vet assisting. So that's one way that we don't just when students are putting their application in to be students at the college, vet assisting and vet tech are not in our online application. So they can choose Hawaiian studies, they can choose liberal arts, they can choose all of the other majors, but ours is not listed. So if students want to come into our program, they have to attend an information session. Our real only other placement is that they have to be at the 100 level for English and math. We used to have 60 seats. We brought that down to 48. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, so once students are completed with basically fall and spring, so we start, start a cohort every fall semester. And so once they've finished their first fall and spring, then they move on to year two, which is vet tech. So this is uh, a full associate in science. We don't have an associate in applied science. We have enough uh, gen ed courses to be a full AS degree. And this is year two. It is a competitive application process and the students apply when they're in spring semester. So it's April now. So our um, students applied, like their applications were due March 1st. And then we met over spring break and decided who was gonna um, be joining us in second year. So we go from 48 seats to 24 seats. The reason that we went from 60 here to 48 was because three years ago, we developed a three-year hybrid program. So our first cohort is graduating this May. Um, and so these students apply in their summer semester for years two and three. All the courses are the exact same. It's just spread out over more time. Um, for these students, the lectures are online. Labs are in person every week for students who live on Oahu, where we are. And it's open to the neighbor islands. And those students fly over three times for three days. So they come Thursday, Friday, Saturday and they're in all day labs three times each semester for their hands-on skills. Our requirement is that they have to work 20 hours a week for a veterinarian while they're in this program. So during our information sessions, we kind of lay out what the admissions requirements are. So basically they have to attend an information session. So we tell them, you can check that one off the list since you're here. Uh, then they need to apply to the college for fall semester. And again, when they're putting in that application, we tell them repeatedly, like, vet assisting is not going to be on the list. You have to manually change your major. So we're going to talk about that. Um, they do, need to do all their medical requirements. So this is the same for all students taking any in-person classes on campus. They need to place at the 100 level for math and English to get into math 101 and English 100. And then 
once they've done those things, then they need to submit a form that we supply. It's called the information session confirmation form, which is a mouthful. Uh, so we just call it the change of major form. So once they've met all of the admissions requirements, then they turn that form into the admissions and records office. The admissions and records office manually changes the student's major to vet assisting. And then once their major is changed, then they're able to register. So the first 48 students to register for their classes are the first 48 students to get a seat. So we do these information sessions, mm, not completely year round. We typically start like in October or so for the following fall. And we do one information session a month for our two year program and one information session a month for our three year hybrid program. And uh, so we don't say, oh, you attended the information session in October. So you're gonna be the first one to get a seat. We don't, we don't manage it that way. We just say, as long as you get your um, admissions requirements completed, then we'll, we'll send an email reminder to all of the students who've attended information sessions. Like, hey, registration is opening this week. Make sure you get yourself into your classes. Um, <clears throat> and then it's up to them to register and pay for their courses. So the year one courses in the the courses here in bold are the ones that are stuck in their semesters. They don't move at all. Um, so in the fall, they take 140, which is an intro to vet tech course and anatomy and physiology. Uh, in spring, they take lab techniques one and nursing and nutrition. And then the courses down here below, they can kind of swap them um, into whatever semester they want to take it. So each of these are offered in the spring and the fall. So they need to take medical terminology, medical math, English composition, and then a vet office and computer skills, intro to psych, and a speech class. And they can take any speech class they want to, as long as it has the oral communication designation. So that's our certificate of achievement in vet assisting. So when they're in their spring semester, then we give them the application packet. And what they turn in to us um, is going to be the application itself. And then they provide their unofficial transcript and their semester schedule so that we can see what their grades are and make sure that they are either completed with all their vet assistant courses or currently enrolled in them. We do have a GPA cutoff of 2.0. So if a student is below that, they're not gonna get one of those 24 seats. And we have what we call a C or better policy. So they need a C or better in all their animal science courses in order to move on as well. So basically when a student turns in their application to us, we take all their documents and basically attach a grading rubric, which I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Um, and so that's how we rank them. And so GPA is like 70% of their, of their um, application score. They also write a personal statement where we provide the rubric of how we're gonna kind of score that. And that lets them write about their goals, um, what got them to this point. And we kind of look at it for their ability to write clearly and concisely. We look at clinical aptitude and attendance. We actually had a, what did they call it? A career and technical education audit at some point, um, which was an interesting process. And they said, you can't, you can't determine somebody's clinical aptitude um, by just knowing how they're doing with their hands-on skills, which was really difficult because we're kind of like, yes, we can. <laughs> like, if you can't do these specific skills, then we can base your clinical aptitude on this. But what we do is we, now we base it on their lab practicum scores. So um, that's what goes into that area. And then class attendance. They need to ask for two letters of recommendation. And then, so that's all kind of scored out of 100. They get a little bit of bonus if they have documentation of prior work in the veterinary field, and that needs to be signed by their current or previous employer. So that's what they turn into us. The application, 
with their transcript and their semester schedule, their personal statement, uh, we have this information. And then they give us their letters of recommendation and document of documentation of work in the veterinary field. So that's what they turn into us. And then this is what gets stapled or attached to each of the of these applications. So we calculate their GPA solely based on the courses in our program. So like if five years ago they came to college and took some general education courses and totally flopped and failed out, um, we don't take those grades into consideration when we're looking at their GPA because that's not that's not really fair, we don't think. So um, we basically put in their grades from first semester, assuming that they took 191, that's that office um, course, courses that they might be in or may have completed, and then courses that they're currently in. And then we calculate that and then put that here with their GPA and clinical aptitude. And then we put their personal statement. We score that out of 15. Attendance is 10. Their letters of recommendation is five. And then if they have prior experience, that's where this goes. So it's a really simple, easy form that we use to rank them. The bottom of the form looks like this, just like were they accepted into vet tech, yes or no? Um, if not, why? And then if we had to have any type of discussion, then those notes go there. So I just kind of cut our form in half. So that's the bottom half of it. So this is very colorful and bright. Uh, this gray box here, um, I, I kind of smushed the students' names, but I wanted to make sure there was no possible way to identify them. So the students' names are here. Um, they're ranked by their score, but you can sort alphabetically if you want to. And so this is what we do. We put, if they got an A, right, that it's a four, a B is a three, a C is a two, and then below that, we basically won't accept them. So we put in their scores, including their current grades. So we typically do this over spring break and they have their midterm exams the week before that. So we grade and then enter their scores exactly as they would fall if that were the end of the semester at midterm. And we enter it into this spreadsheet. And then here's their support courses with math, English, psychology, speech, and the medical terminology class. So we look at uh, GPA that way, then their personal statement scores go here, attendance goes here, letters of recommendation. And there is one over there for, um, for their veterinary experience as well. And then there's a couple coding um, things here. So they may have been enrolled. So this one was for a three-year program. I, had a, I picked a list that had fewer students so that the text would be a little bit bigger and we could actually read it. Um, so these are our neighbor island and Oahu hybrid students, which is why they may be enrolled in summer because our vet assisting is fall, spring, summer to spread it out a little bit. Um, so they, these are basically current enrolled courses. Um, if it's green, it means that they transferred their courses in from a non-UH college like from somewhere else. And if it's orange, it means that they've repeated for ideally a better grade. Um, and yeah, then after we put everybody's score in, we rank them. And then in our hybrid program, we, is, we take the top 16 because there's a, a little fewer students in that one. So that's, we just take all the information from here and plug it into that spreadsheet. And that's what we do. So if they did get a seat, they made the cutoff, then there's post acceptance requirements. So they will have to complete a change of major form to declare their major as veter in veterinary technology. So that way they can register for our second year courses. Um, we need proof of tetanus. Um, we need verification of health insurance. 
they have a criminal background check sent in so that we we were primarily looking for drug charges for the controlled substances. And they need to petition for graduation to get their um, certificate in vet assisting. So a common question that I get is, well, what happens if they don't make the cut? Um, so students who are not accepted still earn their certificate of achievement. We recommend to them, we tell them, like, don't get discouraged. Um, don't just stop out of your classes, you know, keep keep going and do well on your final. Because we have had it that students who were initially accepted end up getting a D, typically in my class, which is the Animal Science 151 class of lab techniques. And um, then a student who was lower on the list actually ends up getting bumped up. And so everything is contingent, right? If you're on the no, you did not get a seat list, that's contingent on everybody that did get a seat keeping those seats. And for everybody that got an acceptance letter, like, yes, welcome, you got in, that's contingent on you getting a seat or better in all of your classes. So we do, so the, um, so this list, right? So if you, if you don't make the cutoff, right? Then again, these students could potentially bump up if these students drop off or choose not to continue on, which sometimes happens, right? Life, life things happen, whatever. People move, stuff happens that they they maybe they had planned to finish and then they don't. So sometimes a student might get bumped up that way as well. So we tell them like, don't, don't stop trying, right? Do well and finish, get this certificate. And if it's a GPA issue, which usually it is, then they can come back and retake courses for a better grade and apply again. Typically those students go on to do well. Um, we look at that as perseverance, right? They have grit and they're trying to make it through and they're trying to succeed. Um, not everybody learns at the same rate and not everybody is successful the first time they try and they come back and they do better, so. So just to give you an idea of the courses that they take in the second year. So we have a summer semester with diseases, radiology in their first internship. Fall semester is lab techniques two, pharmacology, surgery, and lab animal. This is their hardest semester. Um, and then spring is large animal dentistry, a VTNE review course, their second internship, and a humanities elective. A little bit of other information to give you some idea of what this program looks like. Um, this is 73 credits, uh, which is I, probably the most in any associate's degree in the UH system um, at $131 per credit hour. So tuition for the full program is still under 10,000, which is pretty good. We do have some lab fees associated with our program that had to go all the way to the Board of Regents so the Board of Regents um, kind of oversees the entire university. So if you wanna have big changes made, it typically needs to go there. Um, and so these fees had to be approved by the Board of Regents. And so our vet assisting students pay $100 per semester and our vet tech students pay $300 semester. And that helps us cover the cost of supplies. We don't get any funding from campus as a whole. So we use a lot of grants and we use lab fees to be able to purchase our supplies. So I do have a couple pictures of students over the years and um, you're welcome to type in the chat or if you want to unmute, that's okay too. And you can ask whatever questions you're curious about um with this program anything that wasn't clear that you want me to go back to I'm happy to do that thank, thank you, you Sam you're amazing oh, well thank you <laughs> have a great weekend